Hey, welcome to Jack's Tech Corner. I'm your host, Jack. And if you're new to the channel, this is a photography channel. And this is Photoshop Elements. This happens to be Photoshop Elements 10. But this workflow that I'm about to teach you will work in pretty much all versions all the way through 6. If you haven't checked it out yet, go to my website, www.jackstechcorner.com. And look at the great training DVDs I have available for you there. If you want to learn more about Photoshop Elements, that'd be a good place to start. Okay, let's get started here. And we're going to look at Photoshop Elements 10. And this is Photoshop work. This is a workflow with Photoshop Elements. So what we're going to start with here is we have a picture here. It's a decent lit picture. It's a decent background. But I thought we'd clean it up a little bit and change, uh, or just clean the background because I see some imperfections back there. And as I was editing this picture this morning, I thought, you know, this would be a great picture to use for this tutorial. So let's go ahead and do some workflow. The first thing we're going to do is hit, again, Command or Control J. Double click, we can rename that. Renaming is totally an option for you. I do it because I tend to start getting lost with a lot of layers. Now again, I wanted to blow this area up right here. I wanted to work on this area, and I would move this back. There we go. We don't want to move the picture. Just because I want to show you a little bit about how this tool works here, this uh, spot healing brush. What you want to do is get your mouse big enough, and you can see I got this vine coming through here. And although it does add a little bit of class to the picture, I feel that especially right here, when you have something coming out of somebody's head, you probably need to remove that. You can make your brush size bigger by using the right and the left bracket keys. Left is smaller, right is larger. We're going to click, go over that, and just drag down. And as you can see, it actually takes that and it removes it. Again, we'll just get right over there. Here we're going to do the same thing. You'll probably see the effect a little bit better. Just click here and drag up. And there you go. If you're not getting the effect you want, and I've had times where people say, Jack, that's okay, but it's not really clean, then I go to the Clone Stamp tool. Again, this is all just workflow, folks. I go to the Clone Stamp tool. I'm going to ex expand this up to match this, the width of this piece of wood here. Hold my Alt key down, take a sample, go up here and just click. And you can see how nice that makes it. Now when you do this, what I will suggest, let's do it over here, is don't just come over here and click. Because what happens is you're sampling a different lighting over here than what we have over here. Just click the undo button on that side. So again, we will come down to here, make that just a little bit larger. We're going to sample it again, Alt. And just click on top of that. Now editing, and when I teach this live, a lot of people say, Jack, you know, that's great, but that takes a lot of work. You know, I sat with a, uh, a, a uh, artist, actually, the other day, and he was telling me, we sat and we, I, he gave me a lesson in film photography. And folks, if you think this is something, you should be very happy that you never did film photography. Because he was telling me that... Uh, all the steps they had to go through and it almost made me in the at the end of the conversation we were talking and we were talking about the film and I said it almost makes it so you didn't want to shoot is what it happened um, because you, you knew you had to go back and do all this developing and the solution stuff and uh, you know I mean it is what it is but this is nothing. This is this could this is going to take some time. Um, you know what I mean? But the backdrop I was using uh, with my son here, this is my son. We were out shooting outside. It was very dark. And I knew I wanted the background to be very black, which it came out very nicely. I was using a portable box light just to give you some uh, background of this photo. And... There, you know, I could have ripped the vines off of that, but I mean, it's the house, so I didn't want to do that. That looks all right. We'll probably come over here and take this off right here. All right. 
Now, there's a couple ways we can look at this. Either we can take this back here and make this all black. I'm going to show you that. Or we can take him and make him a lot brighter. His lighting is not that bad. Now, I say not that bad because some people say this side of his face is really dark. But whenever you're taking a portrait, and a lot of you probably realize this and some may not, you never want to take your flash and shoot it directly onto your subject because it's going to flatten their face out like a cardboard box. My box light, my actual soft box, was over here on the right. Yeah, it would be our right as we're looking at this picture. It would have been his left. And it was shooting in this way. It's a 36 inch soft box. Now, shooting in this way, it's going to leave that little shadow, but then he has definition of his face. You can see that his face is actually sculpted. That's what you want in a portrait. The next thing I see is see this up here? That's the box light right there. You see it in his glasses? Yeah, let me see if I can blow that up and show you a little bit more of that. Right there, that is the box light right there. You can see it perfectly. You see my flash in there and everything. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting and pretty neat, but you don't want that. We don't want that in his glasses, obviously. So we're going to do the same thing here. Um, so I'm going to try to clone stamp this out. Well, here, let's see if this will work. We'll do our spot healing. We'll do our content aware, and we'll see how it works out for us. We'll see if that works. It's not too shabby. Not too shabby. We can probably go down along here now. And back along here. So not too shabby. I am going to clean it up a little bit, though, with the clone stamp tool. Uh, because, again, like I said, when you're taking pictures of your kids, you know, you always want to have the very best. We'll just click down through there. Take this little piece off his glasses there. Leave a little bit of light here. Again, we're leaving the definition on there to define the glasses because they are curved, and that's the way the light hit them. So that lighting did very, very good. It did a perfect job there with that. So we have that taken care of. Let's go ahead and we'll go back here. Hit the screen. We'll pull him back again. Now we're starting to see a more clean picture. I do see some places here that we had a two blown up I didn't get. So let's go ahead and clean that up now. Um, again, we're going to use the clone stamp tool down here. And it doesn't matter, folks, which tool you want to use. It's a personal preference. Uh, as you've seen here already on this picture, I've used both. You know what I mean? Use, use the tools. You paid for them. They're in your software, so use your tools to your benefit. And then you can start seeing here, as you've seen here, I, I clicked down there and I didn't get the same lighting. Lighting is very important with any kind of photography, whatever you're doing. If you're doing landscapes, uh, if you're doing portraits, lighting is very important to keep it even across your picture if you're making your edits look believable. Now, let's see what we got so far. We can click off this layer here. That's what we had. This is what we have now. That's what we had. This is what we had now. So there's already been a huge difference in this picture just by cleaning up that little bit of stuff, which didn't really take long. I had this discussion a while back, too, with somebody that said, Jack, you don't have to do any edits. Um, you don't. You can get your pictures right out of your camera, and you can print those off, and I'm sure they do, and a lot of people do that. That's why they make those little printers with the camera card uh, slots in it, right? You put the camera card in, you can print your picture right off. That's why they do that. So you can have that ability to do that. What we're going to do now, though, is uh, we're going to do some more editing to this because I want to uh, create something different here. I'm making something. Uh, it was a very good portrait. Uh, he has a very nice facial expression. Okay, he should shave more, but that's the kid. That's how he is. Uh, that's his choice and not mine. So the facial expression and the portrait itself are fine, but I want to do something more with the background. So what I'm going to do here... Not remove it because so far the people I've showed this picture said that's a really cool idea for a backdrop. So I'm going to build more permanent structure in my yard actually for this backdrop. What we want now is a selection brush here and we're going to make a selection of this backdrop. Okay. 
as you see, when you're making your selections, it also takes some time. Somebody asked me the other night if I use my Wacom tablet all the time. If you're not familiar with that, look back at my videos. You'll find what a Wacom pad is. It's basically a pen tablet that you can use to do your pictures. And I do not use it all the time. Uh, right now, I am not using the Wacom pad. Closer to his head. All right. off and I always teach when I'm making selections I always teach the better selection the more believable your edits so especially when you're cutting people out of backgrounds that's probably the toughest thing you ever do yeah I thought I was selecting him but I'm not sorry about the time lags here Okay, so the next thing I want to do here is once I get this done, it looks pretty decent. We're going to go to layer, new layer via copy. And the reason I'm doing that is you can see here now, let's shut these both these layers off. We're going to be working on the background without touching him because I like the way he's lit. We just want to work in this background a little bit. And we want to play with maybe bringing it up a little bit. We're going to bring the exposure up drop the exposure and we're just working on that selected area without having to leave it selected and touch this main one so to do that it's very simple we're going to go down here we're going to go with levels you can go with any one of these hue and saturation but we're going to try levels and see what happens At this point we're going to do a command or control G and we're going to group it with this layer so when we're changing that backdrop, we're not changing this because we're just grouped with that one layer. These are your lighting layers here. So if we go this way, we can make it underexposed more. And as you see, he's not being touched. He's not being lit or uh, exposed or underexposed any. Just We're just working on the background. So we can pull that background up now that we got all that junk out of there. We can even make it brighter now. Pull your shadows up. See, now you get it way overexposed. So if you want that backdrop to come up, just bring it up wherever you want it to be. Or, as I said, you can bring it down a little bit. You can just play with this a little bit. You can actually give it even a different look. I kind of, I kind of like that look. It's kind of looking interesting. All I'm doing basically is increasing my shadows and decreasing my my overall exposure. There, see what I'm saying? You get those boards that actually almost start bending around themselves. So it's a very interesting look back there. I think at the same time that we're going to underexpose it just a little bit more. Because when you do a portrait, it's not about the backdrop, right? It's about the person on the foreground. So that looks pretty good. Um, this post, I don't know if that's really necessary or not. So probably the next thing I would do is I'd bring him back in. I would probably go to my crop tool. I'd probably make a crop. Again, this is just showing you a workflow that I would use. Always reevaluate your picture every step of the way. Always look at it and reevaluate. Say, wow, what can I do next? I'm reevaluating. I'm always looking to see is everything looking okay. Um, maybe, just maybe, you might want to take him and you say, well, he looks pretty good. Um, but maybe you want to uh, do some more saturation with him. So you'd probably select him out. I'd make another copy or a layer just with, with uh, him there. Uh, you could probably do that pretty easily here. Oops, I don't want to do that. Not 
that. Let me get this right here. Okay. So if I hold my Command or Control key down, double click that, it will make that selection back again. And if we do select inverse, now we just have him lit up. Now what we'll do is create a new layer via copy. That will save you from selecting again. New layer via copy. Okay, and the reason it didn't do anything there. Again, let's go back. All right. Go back on your main one when you do this. Because if you select here, he's not there. So that's why we got that transparent layer. So he is there. Layer. New layer via copy. Now you got him there. All right. So he's there. Let's point to the very top layer. Let's go down here. And let's add our hue and saturation. Because we want to play with saturation. Commander, control G again and link those two. And let's play here with a little bit of saturation. You can see now we're saturating him, but we're not touching the backdrop. This is just a way you can, as you're editing, you can isolate each individual part from the other parts. I mean, I think that's very important. I know by taking these pictures, that shirt was very orange. So we're going to make it a little bit more orange there. You can change the lightness of him a little bit. You can really blow him out there. Bring him back. Just like so. And like I say, never try to lighten that side of the face when you're doing a portrait. Because you got this portrait over here coming this way with your light. So just leave that so you have that definition under the eyes and everything. Anything you want to do is lighten him up, which we did. Once you're done with this, I can tell you down here on the bottom. And I'm going to put my click my mouse down here so you can see this. But right down here in the bottom, we went from the original document was 41.4 megapixels or megabytes. And we just took that up to 150.6 megabytes because of all these edits we did, all these layers we have open. So the last thing you want to do when you're done working with your picture and you know you're happy with it, is you can go to layer and go to flatten image or you can go to merge down. Let's go to flatten image. Discord hidden layers. Let's uncheck this one again, I think. And let's do that again. Flatten image. There we go. What that did now, it just took it actually down to 37.9 megabytes. You don't want that 150 megabyte file out there, hanging out there. So that's definitely what you don't need to do. Okay, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on Photoshop Elements Workflow. Uh, again, this happens to be Photoshop Elements 10, but those little tricks I just showed you with the layers and how that all works will work all the way back down to your version 6 if that's what you're using. Again, if you've enjoyed this video and you want to learn even more about Photoshop Elements, go to jackstechcorner.com, click the little pull down, or there's even a uh, tab there that says DVD Collection, and look at each of those DVDs. The absolute best value is a three-volume set. There's 112 videos. It's going to keep your editing skills moving along from very basic to the more advanced edits to teach you. Thanks again for watching this video tutorial of Photoshop Elements. Once again, I'm your host, Jack. This is Jack's Tech Corner. If you're not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. Uh, I'd love to see my subscriptions get up over 8,000 by the end of this year, 2012. Say so I just dated this video. I don't normally do that. And uh, please join. And if you're a member of Facebook, please join our Facebook group. Our Facebook group is Jack's Tech Corner. Come over there, or you can find us at facebook.jackstechcorner.com. We'd love to have you there also. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next time for another Photoshop Elements video tutorial. Bye for now.